This section was written and produced by the Lessons Learned Center. It contains an interview with an inmate hand crew superintendent who was forced to deploy his fire shelter on the Tarkio fire, which was part of the I-90 complex in Montana. On August 10th, 2005, Mike Friend was functioning as a dozer boss when fire behavior increased and the order on his division was to back off to the safety zone. As everyone else made their way quickly, Mike caravaned with a slow-moving dozer. Before he could reach the safety zone, his escape route was compromised and they parked the dozer in the safest spot available. Although there were no injuries, let's listen to Mike explain the lessons he learned from this experience. Fighting fire is dangerous. It's gonna be dangerous. It's, no matter what happens, no matter what we do in the world, from the moment that you step off of a piece of equipment and you put a tool in your hand or a hose in your hand or whatever, you step off that piece of equipment and you go to fight that beast, it's a dangerous job. People are gonna get hurt. I don't care what fire environment that you're in. You're dragging a hose lay into a burning building, or I'm taking a shovel and throwing some dirt on a piece of sagebrush. Our job is inherently dangerous, and it's going to always be dangerous. There are risks that are gonna be taken. No matter how many thousands of checklists that are thrown at us, we still have a job to do. We still have to go out there and cut the brush, and drag the hose, and put the fire out. And it's still gotta be done that way regardless if you have 100 checklists or not. It's still going to be dangerous. Open your mind. I, I use that as a stressful, stressful situation, you know? Another stressful situation in my life was I was in the first Gulf War. And if you ever hear an air raid siren goes off, it makes your asshole slam shut, I'm gonna let you know. And the first night the air raid siren went off, and oh my God, that's incoming to kill me. That's all I thought. And I looked through that tunnel like this, and all 20 of us in the same tent did. We saw the same tunnel, and all we could think about was that bunker right there. Well, in the process of us all trying to rush into the bunker, my best friend got trampled because everybody was trying to go out the same door. He got trampled, got his arm broken about 14 different places, and crushed all of the fingers on his hands. And that point in my life, along with this Tarkio, I just said, whoa, life-changing life -changing situations for me. Those two situations, life-changing. Wow, you need to open your eyes when you get stressed. And I've, I've made myself, made myself. When I start getting to, I know myself at that point, I just know, because my two, I've honestly, I've attributed to two situations, Tarkio and in the Gulf War. Hey, you need to calm down, dude. I need to open your eyes and not let this happen again.
all of a sudden we all felt the wind and I, I distinctly remember all of us looked, hey, look, what's this wind coming up? And it was up canyon, it was coming right at us. It, it was like uh, somebody turned a light switch on at that point and that spot fire came active. I can still vividly remember sustained crown run fire just sheeting across the top of this mountain. Well, the column lifted all right and we started looking around and down drainage of us, uh, we watched it basically start and in a minute, two minutes max, that thing was five acres. And it was just spreading out through the pine litter actively as it, it spread out through the pine litter, litter right behind the flaming front. The trees were torching up and it was starting to, you know, get sustained group torching and it was going. We had spots all around us. Hey, let's go. I remember division saying, let's go. I remember ops saying, let's go. We bug out. There's fire behind us now. It's moving. As we made that turn, I got a call from Robert Barrett. And he asked me, he said, Mike, where are you at? I said, I'm below the alternate escape route road. I'm at that big first hairpin turn. And he said, well, you can't come to the upper safety zone because I just drove through fire to get here. He said, I advise that you use the alternate escape route. So we got to that intersection of the switchback roads and the alternate escape route and we waited on our dozer again. As we're sitting at this intersection, if you will, we're facing south. The dozer operator standing by my door. I'm sitting in the passenger seat, John's driving, and I'm looking up the windshield in the direction. I'm looking at the map and seeing where this alternate escape route goes. And here's Division Delta. And there's the nuclear column coming off of Division Delta also. And there's a nuclear column behind us. So I said, you know, we both looked at each, John Hubbard and I looked at each other and said, ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Never been on this, don't know what it's like. Air attack couldn't see in there, too smoky. So I call operations. I said, hey, do we have anybody that is on that alternate escape route that can tell me what it's like? If is it compromised? Because there's a big column coming off of Delta. I told friend that he was definitely cut off. He's, uh, and I said, hey, we, you remember, you know, you've got the alternate escape route. Copy that. We had identified it ahead of time. You know where it's at? Yep, got it. And uh, heading there. He's heading there. Minutes later, uh, division uh, gets word that that might be compromised. Relays that to uh, dozer boss friend. He's not happy. I'm not going down an escape route that might be compromised, that's 20 miles of, of windy, you know, dirt road. And uh, I'm building a safety zone. I'm like, you got a spot? Yep, uh, got, I, we got a spot we looked at on the way up. I'm like, go for it, and that was it. Kind of a sinking feeling, a couple of sinking feelings for me. Um, feeling pretty responsible for these guys. We got a bomber safety zone. This is a good one, okay. I trusted the guy, he's pretty darn sharp, you know. and. Uh, um, and he did. He made a good, quick decision there. Uh, uh, there was no hesitation. He'd already scoped out a place on his own and, uh, and went right to it. So our primary up the canyon where the spot fire was at is gone. Our secondary to the safety route, the safety zone that I had punched in the day, actually two days before, was done. And our alternate's done. Come on. Dick, step into it, let's get to a spot that I'd, I'd, I'd found myself and John Hubbard had identified a, the day before. A parking area is what I really looked at it for because I was thinking about the fire each day, jumping each our line, and so we're gonna start stacking engines in here. It's one way switch back roads. Let's make a little parking area if we need to. And it was, there was a good spot just to park engines there without doing any work. When we determined that we couldn't take the alternate escape route, that we were pickled, if you will, I, we really weren't worried at that point, but John and I said, I, I looked at him and I said, hey, right there at the knife point, at the first switchback, 
So we take that dozer and I'll, I'll knock that line of trees out, push it off the side, and that's gonna make a huge safety zone. And he looked at me and I can see his eye, yeah, yeah, that is a good spot, let's go. The fire was coming up canyon at us, but it was still going up canyon, but it was burning up drainage. It would shoot up the drainage, crest over the little ridge line, back down, it'd get established in the drainage bottom, and it'd shoot back up, and that's kind of what it was doing. It'd make, just roll a little bit, and then make a big run uphill. I can remember hearing it get established in that bottom of that drainage, in the Nemodi Creek. It just, everything changed. It just came to life. It, all of its energy focused right in the bottom of that drainage, and, and it came to life. It, another huge column come up, it just went massive. John and I talked about burning. We talked about, hey, let's get some fire going on the ground here. Um, we dismissed that really quick after we thought, oh, no, 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 we're not gonna light. At that point, we were standing at the edge of the safety zone. We talked, our thoughts were, if we don't wanna light any fire down here, get something really hot and ripping, and draw that fire that's on top of us down. So we dismissed that. We don't, no, no, let's not mess with anything on that. Let's just, Let's just see, we got a good safety zone. We reassured ourselves, we've got a good safety zone, it's gonna be cool. We moved the pickup around to right where the front of the dozer, and where the pickup was parked before, we had, we had all of our gear in the back of our truck, every bit of thing, everything I owned for fighting fire. That I went away on single resource stuff was in my red bag, my tent, my cell phone, my camera, my towels, the underwear, everything, everything, sleeping, everything. We threw it out of the back, Cordura burns. We, that's how many hundreds of times I've heard people, yeah, my bag burned up in the back of the truck. And that mindset, gotta save the equipment, throw everything out. So we threw everything out of the back of the pickup. We threw it out on the ground at the far back edge of the safety zone. And then we pulled the pickup right in front of the dozer blade. So the ass of the dozer was, the rear of the dozer, excuse me, was that pointing to the south, if you will. And, we pulled them together like this and we kind of flitted around and, and we started getting buffers of fire coming in on us. Little stuff, little stuff. Um, animals running through the safety zone. We had, a, we had a couple bears run through, we had a deer run through, we had some raccoons, uh, saw skunk run through. They're all coming out of that riparian, out of that exclusion zone in, in that Nemodi Creek and it was getting closer, it was getting closer. We, we, we were getting, I was getting a little nervous. I, I know everybody was too, it was, it was getting hot. The winds were howling, they were, they were coming in on us. This fire was eating. It was close enough to know we were feeling, we weren't feeling the indrafts anymore from it. We were just feeling the erratic fire winds off of it. And it, living in a convected column, if you will. It, we were within the winds of a convected column. And old division got on the radar and says, well, I'm gonna order up a type three helicopter to fly in and land you. Because I, th I think you could land them there. And, and I, did told, I told them, no, you're not bringing a Type 3 in here because now we're going to have an aircraft mishap. I mean, it, let's, my, our thoughts were you got the smoke, you got, I've, I've second guessed myself about bringing in a helicopter. And again, the smoke, the fire conditions, the where do I put the equipment? If I, if I had to pull the equipment to get out of the way, to get that Type 3 helicopter to land on an uneven surface, I don't know if I could have brought a Type 3 in there in those conditions. We all kind of pulled into the front of the dozer. All three of us did. Um, we pulled all our gear out. I had pulled my IA pack out, thrown it down. Um, we'd taken a case of water, put it right there. Um, thrown our packs right against the, the edge of the, the dozer blade. And it was loud. I remember it was extremely loud at that point. Um, because that fire that was below us was just thunder and it was jet aircraft on the, on the tarmac screaming. And I remember seeing a, just a big wall of fire hit the edge of our safety zone. I ducked down and I looked up, it, just, it sheeted, it, the sheet of fire just cascaded over the top of us and can still hear it to this day. But boy, right after that, that radiant heat hit us. And I was just like, yow, and it was, it was to the point of, it wasn't really, really wasn't uh, skin searing hot. If that, I don't know what skin searing hot is, but I can imagine. But it was hot like you're doing a burnout. And you, in the middle of the day, you're burning out and, oh, I gotta get away from that. And you just back off a little bit, but we had nowhere to back off to. And, 
And then the winds just really hit us at that point. I, I was actually one to say, hey, it's time, let's deploy our shelters. It was getting hot. Um, I was on my knees behind the dozer blade and my back was just really, really hot like that. Hot, I can't get away from. If I was out in, on the line or something, I would just turn my body and walk away from it. But I couldn't, I had nowhere to go. I was pinned to the ground. I was on my hands and knees and my back was just arched up. I remember and it was hot. It was getting real warm. I, could, I remember to the point I could smell my Nomex. I've been doing this long enough now that I know when I smelled my Nomex starting to heat up, you can smell when it's warm. And I, that's where I was at, I was warm. And at that point, well, three deployed our shelters. In the shelter, I remember it getting hot, um, like, like sauna hot, if you will. I remember the air temperature getting, it just sauna hot. I remember I got into it and thinking of, you know, what you do now, train, thinking of training, made sure all my ground flaps were down in the new shelters. It's, you can't not have a ground flap down. They're just, it's almost like encapsulated, if you will, kind of compared to the old ones. Got in it and spread out and I, we were talking and yelling, we were yelling back and forth with each other. We were right next, laying on top of each other, but yet it was loud. And it was starting to get some smoke and I was talking, I'm really smoky in here, real smoky. And uh, I, think, I think John said, I'm not, I'm not too smoky, it's not too bad or something. And I couldn't figure out why I was so smoky. And I, I, for some reason I did this and I looked and there were embers that were blowing underneath. The wind was howling. It was, embers were blowing in underneath my ground flap. So I was actually putting embers out that were inside. That's what was creating all the smoke inside my shelter was burning chunks of wood that were just smoldering in there and just filling it up. And I remember putting those out and shooting them to the side and um, laid in the shelter, did the old, actually put the face down in the dirt. I was breathing like this for a few because of the smoke that was in there and not wanting to lift it up, you know, thinking about all that stuff. And I remember my back getting hot again. My back and my right shoulder really is what it was. So what I had to do to accommodate that, I had to get on my left side and I actually had to pull my feet in in the kind of the semi-fetal position and I had to pop the shelter off my back with my elbow. And my elbow would get hot and I'd pull it down the shelter would lay back on me and I'd pop it back up. And that, that actually seemed like an eternity, it really did. It seemed like a long time, but it, it wasn't. I remember John saying, hey, the truck's burning. I peeked, I looked. And I was laying with my back to the truck. So I was, I, I didn't want to move because I had that shelter that kept laying down on top of me and was getting hot. And John says, I, I can look at it, the, the, the rear tires are burning on it. I was like, oh no. I'm thinking I'm not in a good spot right here. John got up, he said, I'm gonna get up and go see if I can put it out real quick. And he says, my shelter, I've, I, I watched the heat. And he says, no, I've already had my shelter. He said, lift your flap up, it gets cooler. I went, what? And I reached up and I lifted the flap of the edge of the shelter up. I just lifted up about that far and just felt the cooler air come in versus that sh sh just hot air inside that shelter. Popped it open. I was like, ooh. And John then came right back. He says, it's not, it's not the truck. It's our gear. I was like, oh, the gear? Really? At that point, I wasn't caring about the gear. He laid down and laid back down, crawled back in it and Passed some water bottles back and forth to each other. Drank some water, that was refreshing inside the shelter for sure. Some cool water. I had my canteen with me, <laughs> again training, but what I had done is I'd kicked that sucker down when I got in there. It's not perfect world by any means. I'd kicked it down, it was at my feet and I couldn't get it. <clears throat> and when I did get it, I pulled it up to me, it was hotter than Hades. John and I both got up, left the shelter draped over us a couple times. Got a big buff of the wind. That stand of larch again did this. Snap, started snapping off. The winds were still heavy there. Laid back down. I remember rocks rolling through the, through the deployment site. The biggest lesson learned for me really is uh, is 
weather directly related to the fuels. Um, five days of red flag warning. It took five days of single digit RHs for those thousand hours of fuel to react. On the fifth day, it succumbed to it. Five days. That's a big, big, big lesson learned for me. I pulled the trigger a little bit earlier for me too now. So my trigger points have moved. And people ask me all the time, well, how do you move your trigger points? And it's all situation dependent. And I pulled the trigger earlier a couple of times now. Um, none of them have really, nothing ever happened, but I still pulled the trigger. I still got out of the way of something, two ridges instead of one ridge, if you will. Well, another big lesson learned for me is uh, um, the thought of equipment versus, versus the safety. I'm going to ride off a piece of equipment again, plain and simple. <clears throat> that chunk of iron can be replaced. With my, my situation that I have right now under my belt, with the tarchial burnover in my belt, if I'm ever around and have a crazy situation, I'll deal with the ride off of equipment. I'll, I'll, I'll front that battle, whatever comes to me. I honestly will. Fire shelter is just another tool of PPE to be utilized. And don't let the stigma of, oh my God, the fire shelter come out. That, that's honest, you know, that's a lesson learned too. Don't be afraid if you feel that you need to use that fire shelter because you have nothing else, no other avenues to, that's the last, last use. I use the last use fire, last use, last chunk of PPE on my back and it worked. It worked like it was supposed to work. I'm here to talk about it.